Racing. We'll get you this close to the action with Hot Wheels Pro Racing Die Cast. brings you NASCAR's greatest moment. Winning a race is what it's all about. Captured an incredible die-cast collectible. Only 99 cents each with any purchase. Collect all four. We need to get more cars out in the market, right? Everybody wants to see these cars. Everybody, you know, people can't find them. We totally recreated. We reinvented the wheel. We rebuilt bodies for the next-gen car. You know, I, I collect these things also. When I open them up, they look really good. I've been collecting NASCAR diecasts for almost 20 years now. What originally started as a collection of a handful of cars my grandpa gave me when I was two years old has turned into a collection over 2,000 strong. However, over the past couple years, I've actually come to appreciate how great the diecasts from the 90s and 2000s are. Despite many of these cars being well over 20 and 30 years old, they still look amazing today. It kind of gives you a glimpse of NASCAR's golden age. To me, it's probably the closest I'm ever going to get to going back in time and experiencing NASCAR in its prime. And a lot of these diecasts do an amazing job showing that, with all their top quality and really high detail. And you think over time it'd get even better with all the new technology and money coming into the sport. You think that diecast would get better in the future. However, the future is here, and it's never looked more grim. Over the past two decades, the diecast market has changed drastically. What was once a community of multiple producers has now changed to just one. One company that's holding the entire NASCAR diecast market in its hands, and that's Lionel. While Lionel is more known for its line of model trains, in 2016, they bought complete rights to produce NASCAR diecast. Whether it be the ones you'd see at the grocery store or the ones you'd see at the races, they would all be produced by Lionel. At the time, I was actually super excited for this. Now all the diecasts would be consistent, and now it's made by a really high quality manufacturer. I was actually super hyped about this. But in a few short years, I would come to realize that now, NASCAR diecast as a whole was on a runaway train heading to its doom. So what the heck happened? How is Lionel ruining the NASCAR diecast industry? Well, it's not a simple answer, as there are a lot of layers worth of problems that Lionel has brought to the table. Some are small, while others completely ruin the diecast experience. And as someone that's collected diecasts for over two decades, I think it's about time I finally go in and dissect these issues, and why Lionel is ruining NASCAR diecast. One of the biggest benefits of the diecast grades of the 90s and 2000s was how easy it was to get your hands on a diecast. There were multiple different ways to buy diecasts from multiple different producers. Whether it be the racing champions and winner circles that you can find at retail stores, or the fancier action and team caliber cars that you can find at the races, or at more NASCAR specific stores, like NASCAR Thunder and that one other place with the racing sims, I kind of forgot what the name was. Man, if only I made a video about that. And it got even better with the rise of the internet, with more places like GoRacing.com, the NASCAR Superstore, or Aftermarket on eBay. There were so many cars being produced around this time, and it was super easy for anybody to start up their own collection. And with numerous different producers, if one didn't have a car you were looking for, there was a really high chance another producer would have what you were looking for. Now let's compare that to the modern day Lionel diecast. Unless you go to a lot of races and go to the team haulers, there's only one real way for you to get diecasts. Pre-ordering. And even then, it's not reliable. Because now, in order for a diecast to actually be produced, it has to hit a minimum order quantity, or MOQ. For 164s, it's 2,500. For 124s, it's 500. If it does not hit that number, these diecasts get put on the infamous DNP list. A ginormous list of cars that Lionel had out for pre-order that never made the MOQ. Now, diecasts that were planned to be released but never did is nothing new. However, the DNP list is getting bigger and bigger every year. 
to the point where hundreds and hundreds of cars every year make this list. It's almost like Lionel shelves just as much, if not more cars than they actually produce. So if you're going to pre-order a diecast, you better hope that 2,499 other people do too. Otherwise, you're screwed. And since Lionel's the sole producer of diecasts, if they aren't making it, it's over. That car is never seeing the light of day. You might get lucky if it makes the NASCAR Authentics list, but if it's a more obscure driver, too bad, so sad. And it gets even worse since the MOQ number is never public, so you never know if the car is actually going to hit the MOQ or not until it's too late. So in the end, it's really hard to make a diecast collection if there's no diecast to collect. The idea of the MOQ threshold sounds good on paper, but Lionel really needs to look at that long DNP list and realize that it really isn't a good business strategy. Now I can already hear someone saying, well if you don't want the car to get DNP'd then just pre-order it. Except there's one problem. Everyone makes mistakes. We're human after all. Fortunately, quality control is there to make sure the cars look as best as they can be. But every once in a while, a car slips under the radar and makes in the circulation, thus creating an error car. Now, this is nothing new, as even during the diecast golden era, there was every once in a while a misprint or an upside down packaging or even a misspelling of Ernhedert, but that was a rarity back then. Lionel, on the other hand, it's clear they don't have a good quality control, if at all. Lionel has pretty much made error cars less of a fun and unique little collectible to a giant annoyance. Some mistakes being so blatantly obvious, you kind of wonder how on earth Lionel missed this. Do they even have a quality control? Missing decals. Broken decals. Chip paint before you even take it out of the box. Roof numbers being placed upside down. And so far, I've just mentioned the decal errors. Lionel's errors tend to get way worse. Windows completely off the car. Missing axles. Parts being placed in the wrong spot. Parts broken inside the box. Not even their Elite 124s can make it unscathed. It now becomes a lot more obvious why people don't pre-order. Why would you want to pay over a hundred dollars for a car that might end up broken before you even get it? Pre-ordering a car from Lionel is like playing a slot machine. You might get lucky and get a perfect car, but you might also get a car that's missing the windshield, has an axle missing, and has six decals in the wrong spot, along with 12 other missing decals. Oh yeah, and the paint's chipping off too on the spoiler, even though you haven't even touched it yet. Now, making a bad car on accident and not checking the quality is one thing, but intentionally making a bad car is a completely different ballpark. Let's talk about their cost cutting and their infamous PTC molds. The date is November 3rd, 2022. The fourth wave of the 2022 NASCAR Authentics line has been hyped for a long time. After numerous delays and shipping issues, it finally arrived. Lionel reveals the fourth wave and it's on the PTC mold. Now a lot of newer collectors might be confused on what the PTC mold is and why so many people hate it. To put in the simplest terms, it's a car made by a separate factory that's notorious for being horrendously inaccurate and horrendously ugly. If you still don't know what I'm talking about, put a regular car and a PTC car next to each other and you'll realize the differences right away. The car's bulkier, the quality's a lot poorer, overall it just is a much worse car. So why does Lionel use this? Simple. It's cheaper to make. Now I can totally understand Lionel doing this at first, especially during the 2022 Wave 4, since they were still trying to get these cars out as soon as possible out to the masses. But even at the tail end of the 2023 line, they were still using the PTC molds. And even Lionel themselves are aware of the backlash. They understand that people don't like this, and yet they still use it. People don't want to pay full price for a cheaper car. 
And that's not even the only cost-cutting measure that Lionel has used over the past couple years. They've also managed to make grainy decals that look horrible. And sometimes, especially on the PTC molds, they don't even use decals and just use one giant sticker to cover the car. Fortunately, this high amount of cost cutting is only really in the realm of NASCAR Authentics for the moment. The regular line is still okay. But for many collectors, the NASCAR Authentics line is really the only way for them to get diecast. So it's important not to skimp out on the quality here. But instead of Lionel actually trying, they think that gaslighting everybody into thinking that this is a different car is actually a good idea. Yeah, it's different from the Gen 6 PTC, but it's still a PTC. Now you'd think everybody would agree that these cost cutting measures would be bad. However, there's actually people defending Lionel for doing this and saying it's perfectly fine. And every time I see somebody criticizing Lionel for the quality issues, they always come out and say the exact same thing. It's just a toy. Now I get these are meant to be retail cars, and a lot of people that buy these tend to be kids. However, just because the target audience is a younger demographic does not mean it's okay to lower the quality. By your logic, you shouldn't be complaining about NASCAR 21 Ignition because it's just a kid's game. It being just a toy is not an excuse for bad quality when other manufacturers 20 years ago and even Lionel themselves have proven that they are capable of higher quality. I'm tired of this excuse because it's just people settling for mediocrity and are perfectly fine with Lionel openly scamming them. However, at the very least, Lionel is cutting costs in a lot more smarter ways. Recently, Lionel decided to end the tradition of including a car with a sticker to cut costs, which I think overall this was a much smarter move. Dare I say they can even cut costs even more by reducing the size of the box now that the sticker's gone. It's okay for Lionel to cut costs, and I actually appreciate them finding a smarter way to do it. However, decreasing the quality of the car is not an okay way to cut costs. And lastly, it being just a toy is not an excuse for terrible quality. Now, since we're already on the topic of NASCAR Authentics... Now, DNPs, bad quality control, and overall poor quality might be bad, but I feel like Lionel's biggest list of problems come from the NASCAR Authentics. Since their retail diecast is pretty much their public business card, you'd think Lionel would bring their A-game to it and have really high quality cars. However, it's usually the first on the chopping block when it comes to cost cutting, and is overall the most flawed part of Lionel. Now, younger viewers might be surprised that the NASCAR Authentics line wasn't actually Lionel's creation, but Spin Masters. After Winter Circle left the sport in 2010, in 2011, Spin Master would take over the retail diecast market and create the NASCAR Authentics line. And they would hold on to that from 2011 all the way up to 2015. I actually really liked these cars back then since it was really the only reliable way for me to get diecast. And while they were pretty bulky, almost to the same level as the PTC molds on the Lionel cars, it actually made sense since it was from a different company. They would actually innovate the idea in releasing cars in waves like they are today. And when Lionel bought them out in 2016, they actually went on to port this idea to their own NASCAR Authentics. Today, the Authentics waves tend to consist of 10 cars, 9 regular cars, and 1 chase piece, with said chase piece consisting of a liquid color car. While this is actually a pretty great idea and a good way to hype up the Authentics line, it has a lot of problems. For starters, a majority of the NASCAR Authentics cars in each wave tend to be cars that are already available in the regular line. Now I do understand that these are cars that are meant to be more easily obtainable and cars that are meant for people that can't get their hands on the regular line, and that Lionel does add some Authentic exclusive cars, I do feel like the Authentics line could benefit with a balance between reproductions and exclusives. A lot of collectors, including myself, really love those authentic exclusive cars, since it could give cars that DNP'd in the regular line another chance at life. But most of the time, they're just reproductions of cars already available. I mean, it's nice that these are easier to get, but still. It especially doesn't help that frequently, Lionel tends to release what people call peg warmer waves. Waves of cars that nobody wants. It's called peg warmers since they're just going to be sitting on the pegs for months and months on end. Another major problem is how long it takes for these waves to actually hit the shelves. 
If you live near Concord Mills or Opry Mills and able to go to the Lionel stores there, you can actually get the cars as soon as they're revealed. But if you're outside those two cities, it could take weeks or even months before you can actually see them. I'm pretty sure if you went to the store right now, you'd be seeing cars from the middle waves of 2023. Cars that are already outdated. And it gets even worse since stocking is heavily dependent on what sells. And if Lionel released more peg warmer waves, it's going to be harder for cars to sell and it will take even longer for the waves to hit the shelves. And somehow it gets even worse with scalpers taking advantage of this and tend to sell the newer waves that double or even triple the price online. That's right, NASCAR Authentics have a scalper problem. And they even went out of their way to ruin one of Lionel's best products of 2023, the Snowball 500 Advent Calendar. A brilliant way for Lionel to sell NASCAR Authentics in a 12-day Advent Calendar. However, they made the fatal mistake and shipped the calendars out way too early, thus leading to scalpers completely spoiling the calendar. Oh, and did you think you'd actually have a chance again the chase piece? Yeah, that's cute. The individual problems of the Authentics line aren't nearly as bad as the DMP list and the quality problems. However, over time, these problems have and will get worse and worse, making the NASCAR Authentics line very flawed. Now, Lionel has done some amazing things with the Authentics line, and has even created the Winner Circle line. Even though I do feel like the name is kind of nostalgia bait, it is a fantastic idea to have the race win line separate from the regular line. But with all the pros and great ideas, there are several things holding them back from the Authentics line being amazing. This is Lionel's public image here. This is what most people see. And if they want the public to see them in a positive light, they really need to do their best and work their hardest to make sure the Authentics line is fantastic. But instead, Lionel's taking way too long to release waves of peg warmers in cars we've already seen before. And while they might have some unique cars, they take so long that scalpers take advantage of it and sell them for $60 on eBay. In the end, while the NASCAR Authentics line is good on paper, there's a lot of bugs in it that's keeping it from being the great Authentics line it should be. And that's kinda sad. Now before this video ends, I just want to make one thing clear, because eventually I do feel like a Lionel representative is actually going to watch this video and think I'm bashing them because I hate them. And that's far from the truth. I'm not making this video because I hate Lionel and I want to see them suffer. I'm making this video because I love Lionel. I love what they do and I love their diecast. My legacy on YouTube would not be a thing if it wasn't for them. And while their lows are really low, their highs are even higher. This video is equivalent to a parent confronting their kid for having a bad grade in math. Because, yes, this is really bad and I know they're better. But it's not because I hate them, it's because I know what they're capable of and I want to see them succeed. Because all of these problems I've talked about today are caused by another problem. It's a never-ending loop of Lionel decreasing the quality, making people not want to pre-order the cars. Less people pre-order the cars, meaning more cars get DNP'd. More cars get DNP'd means Lionel makes less money. And when Lionel makes less money, they have to cut costs and lower the quality even more. Thus, it's an endless cycle. And if this loop keeps happening, eventually, NASCAR diecast will be no more. At the current state we're at right now, NASCAR Diecast is on a very similar path that NASCAR video games had. Initially a library of fantastic games, until EA bought out all the competition and took over sole rights to it. Then the quality decreased and eventually, NASCAR video games didn't exist anymore. That collapse was sparked after EA took over sole rights and destroyed all its competition. And coincidentally, that's exactly what Lionel did. I honestly feel like healthy competition is an amazing thing, because it encourages people to make better products and improve. And without them, there's really no reason for them to keep making good products, because it's either them or nothing. While the chances of another diecast producer coming to NASCAR is horrendously slim and extremely unrealistic, Lionel needs to realize even though there's only two options of them or nothing, 
way more people are taking the nothing route. And every year, diecast libraries become more and more slim, and overall, the art of diecast hunting becomes less and less satisfying. I want to buy NASCAR diecasts. It's just all the cars I want get cancelled, and the ones that don't look horrible. It just hurts me to see Lionel give up like this. Since NASCAR diecast was what actually got me into the sport in the first place, and even today, many fans enter the sport thanks to diecast. This is why I'm both so passionate and critical about Lionel. Because I know what they're capable of, and it's really hard for me to watch them slowly degrade in quality. But, it's not all doom and gloom. Because, even at somebody's lowest, it's possible for them to make a comeback. If I ever had to pick an example for the greatest comeback in history, it would have to be Kurt Busch's career. He came swinging as a competitor right out of the gate, and in only his fourth full-time season, he was hoisting the cup championship at season's end. But by the end of the 2000s and into the 2010s, he was just a hollow shell of his former glory. Then, 2012. He would lose his top-tier ride at Penske and end up racing for an underfunded backmarker team. His performance dropped so drastically, it was hard to believe that this guy won the championship eight seasons prior. And to make things worse, he was ranked as one of Sports Illustrated's top 10 most hated athletes of the year. Mainly due to the fact that Kurt portrayed himself as a giant rage monster over the radio and overall just getting into fights with everybody. By all means, this should have been the end of Kurt's career. This was his rock bottom, as everyone saw him as a washed up has-been that hated the world. But, even at his lowest, Kurt pulled through, and eventually he ended up with a good team in the form of Storthaus Racing, and eventually managed to bounce back. Five years later, he would go on to win the Daytona 500, and by the 2020s, he became a fan favorite. Although it was sad that his career came to an abrupt end in 2022, I feel like Kurt's career is a legendary one. He managed to go from rock bottom and climbed his way back up to the top. But why am I mentioning this here? What does this have to do with Lionel? Well, it's to prove that even when you're at your lowest and everyone hates you, it's still possible for you to bounce back. Just because everyone sees Lionel as a joke and a horrible producer doesn't mean that it has to stay that way. Eventually, if Lionel manages to put the effort in and shapes up, they could be a respectable name in diecast. Make the MOQ threshold easier to obtain. Put more effort into your quality control. Cut your costs in smarter ways that don't affect the quality. Make your retail diecast worth buying for everybody. Because in my perspective, Diecast can help preserve and immortalize the cars and schemes that ran over the years. But in order for that to be possible, they need to be as accurate and high quality as they can be. The reason that the diecasts from the 90s and 2000s look so good is because they're so accurate to what they were on the track. It's a preservation of NASCAR's prime, a preservation of its golden age, and a preservation of the NASCAR I was introduced to 20 years ago. Watching your first ever NASCAR race may be a once-in-a-lifetime experience, but diecast can help make it last a lifetime.